Hello, today I'm going to walk through setting up a simple optimization using Generate. This walkthrough is going to be fairly high level. I'm not going to touch on too many specific details. It's mainly just to give you a good idea of all the steps involved in setting up an optimization. Uh, when you first log into your Generate account, you will be presented with the project dashboard, which you can see here on my screen. Uh, in the bottom of the, the project dashboard, there are sample projects available that you can clone by clicking the clone button, and then they will appear in your projects list. Uh, these projects are already set up and ready to be optimized. Um, so if you just want to quickly watch the, the generate optimize a part, you can clone one of these, open a scenario, and just immediately run it. Or if you have a project in mind that you don't quite know how to set up, you can look at these and see specifically how they were set up for ideas that may apply to your project. Um, the project we're going to be working on is this simple cantilever, similar to this simple cantilever example here. I already have my version of it set up so I can show you what we're going to be building. So I'm going to open this project. Okay, so on the right here, the blue mesh is the topology result we're hoping to create and the gray, or let me turn it on so we can see it, the gray rectangle is our design space. Now this design space was modeled just in any uh, standard parametric model or they can export a step file and you can see it's fairly simple. It's simply an extrusion with uh, two holes and a um, void removed from one of the corners. Now this optimization when it's set up using generate utilizes one of our design constraints called a symmetry plane, which you can see here, which basically means we can design only half of our design space and then use generate to create the other half symmetrically in the topology result. So it's a quick way to, to cut down on your CAD work and end up with a complete part. Um, this optimization also uses a couple of boundary conditions. So this hole here is fixed and this hole has a force applied to it in the negative z direction. So those three things, the, the symmetry plane, the fixed boundary condition, and the, the force boundary condition are the three things that we need to set up before we can run this optimization. So I'm going to do that in a new project. I'm going to head back to the project dashboard and create a new project by clicking the create project button here and then simply dragging and dropping a step file design space onto the dialog box. Uh, now the project is uploaded and then quickly transformed for usage inside of Generate. Now the project is ready to be opened, so I can click Open. Okay, now you can see on the right here we have our design space in the 3D viewer. And on the left, we have the scenario card, which has all of the parameters for the scenario that we need to specify before we can run the optimization. Um, on the bottom here, we have the scenario cards themselves that we can create multiples of and run multiple optimizations at the same time, which will be covered in a later video. So the first thing we need to create is the symmetry design constraint, symmetry plane design constraint. Now you do that by first selecting any face of the design space. So in this case, this is the face we want the topology result to be symmetric about. So we'll select that face, click Add Design Constraint, and then click Symmetry Plane. Uh, this dialog box that comes up is warning you that the plane that you're selecting must be planar, it must be orthogonal, uh, it cannot be curved, and there cannot be groups of faces. So a single orthogonal planar face must be selected for the symmetry plane design constraint to work. I'm going to click Save. So now you can see this symmetry plane has become visible in the design constraints group. It's visible in the 3D viewer as the black square, and it can be turned on and off by clicking the eyeball next to it in the design constraints group here. So the next thing we need to do are create boundary conditions. So a boundary condition is applied to a face group. Now a face group is a group of faces that we've pre-selected. So a face group for this hole here is made up of these two faces. 
So I'm going to select both of these faces by clicking one and holding shift and clicking the other. So now I have both faces selected. So I need, to, I need to turn these faces into a face group. So to do that, I click Add Your First Face Group. Now the only thing that you really need to specify here is the offset thickness, which I'll touch on after we've run the optimization. It's easier to explain it with, with a result to point to. So for this optimization, I know 2 millimeter offset thickness works well, but like I said, I'll explain that in a minute. I'm going to click Save. And now to add our other face group, this half hole here, which will become a complete hole in the topology, topology result when the uh, result is made symmetrical about the symmetry plane. So now I'm going to click these two faces, add another face group. I'm going to use two millimeters again. Click Save. OK. So now we have our two face groups, this one here and this one here. We need to apply our boundary conditions. Now we apply boundary conditions inside of load cases. So first we need to create a load case. Do that by creating, by clicking add load case here and then save. Okay, now we can see we have the option to apply a boundary condition to both of these face groups. Now if you remember from the example that I showed you, this face group is set to fixed. So to do that, we click add, constraint, and then fixed. Click Save, and you can see a fixed icon appears in the 3D viewer to show you that that face group is fixed. And now this face group, we need to apply a force to it. So we do that by clicking Add and then Load. And then for this optimization, I know a load of negative 150 newtons, or a load of 150 newtons in the negative Z direction will work well. OK, so click Save. So now you can see we have our fixed boundary condition around this feature. We have a force applied to this feature, and we have a symmetry plane applied to this face. So now we're just about ready to run the optimization. Now to do that, we click Generate down here in the bottom right-hand corner. And then the Review Scenario card comes up, which allows you to specify a couple of final parameters. Uh, the first one being the material. Currently, we support these materials, but in the future, we plan to support more, as well as custom materials. But for this optimization, I'm just going to stick with the pre-selected titanium. The next is resolution. Um, the finer the resolution, resolution you select, the finer the details will appear in the topology result with, at the expense of a longer optimization time. So I'm going to select coarse. Uh, the next parameter that we need to specify is the mass target. Now the mass target is the percentage of the design space volume that will be available to the topology optimization engine. So I know for this optimization, 20% of the volume of this design space is adequate to produce a good result. The final thing that we need to just pay attention to is the, the credits. Now with a free account, you are given 100 free credits per month. Uh, the red value here is how many credits it will cost to run this optimization, and the gray value is how many credits you'll have after the optimization is run. So with all those things in mind, I think we're ready to run the optimization. So I'm going to click Yes, Generate. Now you'll see the, the um, scenario card has opened up the optimization process window, and some progress bars have appeared. Uh, the diagram of convergence is simply the optimization progress. Each stage uh, is progressively increasing the resolution of the optimization result until um, a final result is reached. Now the final result will automatically be meshed and loaded to the 3D viewer. So now you see that's happened. The final uh, result has been meshed and it's been loaded and you can see here it is. So one final thing I want to touch on uh, that I mentioned earlier. When I made these face groups, I gave them an offset thickness of 2 millimeters. Now you can see, now for example, this hole here, there is a 2 millimeter offset of material around that hole. So the offset, offset thickness, whatever value is entered there, you're guaranteed that amount of material offset from that given face group. 
So you can see the same thing is true here of this hole, the same two million two millimeter offset. So that concludes this video. In future videos, we'll touch on other design constraints that are available inside of Generate, other boundary conditions, um, how to use FEA, and how to run multiple scenarios at the same time.